At last, the man behind the voice. Welcome to my first ever extended tour on YouTube. And what better place to begin our virtual tour adventure than a visit to the Hermitage near Dunkeld in Perthshire, Scotland. It's a stunning site centred around a waterfall with a hidden cave and a little known gunpowder plot. So welcome to the Hermitage near Dunkeld in Perthshire, one of my favourite places in Scotland and hopefully you'll soon see why. So we start by passing under the old Perth to Inverness railway bridge built in the 1860s and still in use today. Before we start it's worth pointing out the sign on the left hand side which tells us that the Hermitage is operated and managed by the National Trust for Scotland. The National Trust operate over a hundred sites around Scotland and for about five pounds a month you can become a member to help protect sites like this for everyone to enjoy. For anyone who doesn't already know me, my name is John McEachan and I'm a licensed Blue Badge tour guide covering all of Scotland. And some of you might know me from social media as Visit Scotland Tours on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and now on YouTube too. The Hermitage is a beautiful woodland walk centred around the Craigvinnan Forest and the River Bran. It was created in the 1750s by the 3rd Duke of Athol, a wealthy landowning family in this part of Perthshire, descended from Clan Murray. They owned the site until 1943 when they donated it to the National Trust of Scotland for the benefit of everyone to enjoy. And don't worry if you're wondering exactly where I am or how to get here. I'll leave some directions and maps at the end of the video. So for the moment, just sit back and enjoy. The Hermitage was created partly in thanks to a Scotsman named James Macpherson. Macpherson was an author and writer and in the 1760s he penned a now infamous collection of stories relating to an Irish historical figure named Ossian, who was descended from the kings of Ireland. Ossian was an Irish Celtic bard and warrior poet, who also just happened to be blind, who lived in the third century. Macpherson claimed to have travelled through the highlands collecting stories that had been passed down from generation to generation orally in the Gaelic language. He then translated them into English, publishing them and several volumes of books, and those books went on to become bestsellers. Aristocrats and the wealthy of Scotland and the United Kingdom were seduced by the epic tales of Ossian, and further afield, even Napoleon Bonaparte and Thomas Jefferson were said to be mesmerised by Ossian's incredible stories. Macpherson also went on to inspire writers such as Wordsworth and Byron. And here in rural Perthshire, it influenced the Duke of Athol to create the hermitage centred around this river, the River Bran. You can see why he chose this spot to try and replicate the landscape and the life of Ossian, because this place really is like a fairy tale. And the further you walk, the better it gets. There was only one small problem with Macpherson's epic tales of Ossian, and that was that Macpherson had made it all up. It was complete and utter nonsense, and James Macpherson had written Ossian's tales himself, duping the wealthy aristocrats of Scotland, the United Kingdom and Europe in the process. But thankfully, as far as the Duke of Athol was concerned, He'd already invested so much time and effort in the project to create the Hermitage that he decided not to let the small issue of factuality stand in the way of a magical woodland walk. And he continued to expand this place for friends and family to create miles and miles of walks that pass through this beautiful forest. 
The entire walk is laid out to direct guests towards the incredible views and spectacular scenery. And on a beautiful day like today, there are few places in Scotland as spectacular. The pathway that I'm on is just wide enough to accommodate a horse-drawn carriage because back in the 18th century, people of nobility rarely ever walked. At this point, the path splits and the best way to get to Ossian's Hall of Mirrors and the Blacklin Waterfall is to peel off to the left, which takes you alongside the River Bran, which is a tributary of the River Tay, the longest river in Scotland. There are over 20 miles of footpaths in the Craigvinnan forest and endless hiking opportunities, surrounded by beautiful mature woodland, some of the oldest trees in Scotland. And here on the right hand side, you'll see the first references to the folklore left behind over the centuries. This tree stump contains hundreds if not thousands of wishes, coins hammered into the trees by people who have visited this place over the centuries. People are often surprised that these coins are respected and left, but these coins represent thousands of wishes left through the centuries by people visiting this magical place. And us Scots are incredibly superstitious and to take a coin is to take someone else's wish and no one wants to mess with the fairies. As you'll see, the Hermitage and the National Trust ask people to no longer put coins into the trees and say that all the wishes have been granted. So please make sure you respect and preserve this magical place for others. Lots of clients I bring here often comment on how the landscape is very reminiscent of parts of the United States of America, and that's for two reasons. The first is that Scotland used to be attached to the United States hundreds of millions of years ago before breaking free and travelling across what is now the Atlantic Ocean. The second reason is down to a man named David Douglas. David Douglas was born in Perthshire, at a place called Schoon, to the north of the city of Perth, where he was a gardener, a botanist and a plant collector. He spent his early life working for the Earl of Mansfield, as head gardener at Schoon Palace, the ancient crowning place of the Kings of Scotland. And he also knew the Duke of Athol, who was cousin to the Earl of Mansfield. Both the Duke of Athol and the Earl of Mansfield sponsored David Douglas to travel to the New World, in particular to the United States of America, where he collected plants, trees and seeds to bring back to the United Kingdom. David Douglas was responsible for introducing over 240 species of tree and plant to the UK, the most famous being the Douglas fir, which he named after himself bringing it from the west coast of the United States in Oregon, back to Perthshire in Scotland. Perthshire is known as Big Tree Country, and part of the reason for that is because places like the Hermitage were planted over 200 years ago and allowed to mature. Until 2017, the Hermitage was home to the tallest tree in the United Kingdom, a Douglas fir, 201 feet tall or 67 metres in height but unfortunately a huge storm in January 2017 uprooted our record-breaking tree and Scotland and the Hermitage lost its title of the tallest tree in the UK. Fingers crossed in another 10 or 20 years with a storm or two in England Scotland will once again regain top spot. I'll probably do a video on David Douglas at some point in the future because he was quite an incredible character, living an exceptional life, travelling the world and dying in some of the most bizarre circumstances in Hawaii. This section of the walk takes us towards the Black Lynn Pool, downstream 
of the Black Lynn waterfalls and the old bridge and Ossian's Hall of Mirrors. But first though, we've got a little reference to David Douglas in the form of a wood carving shaped like a Douglas pine cone. It's the perfect place to recline and stare up into the canopy of the forest and maybe, if you're lucky, spot one or two of the resident red squirrels. Over here we get the first look at the Black Lynn Pool. This is a deep dark pool of slow moving water that sits just below the old bridge and the Black Lynn waterfalls. This was gouged out over thousands of years by the power of the water, creating a deep dark pool that's believed to be over 30 feet deep. At certain times of the year you'll see wild Atlantic salmon sitting in the deep water waiting for an opportunity to run and climb over the waterfalls. Over here there's a perfect little wooden bench where you can sit and ponder and take in the spectacular scenery. Hopefully the microphone's doing the job and the power of the water isn't drowning me out. But look at that for a view. And look at those incredible colours. Without doubt the autumn is the best time for me to visit the Hermitage. But throughout the year it changes with the seasons and every time you visit it's just as spectacular. In this direction, it takes us towards Ossian's Hall of Mirrors and also the old bridge. You'll also note the deep dark colour of the water because last night there was heavy rain and the water has become peat stained from the hills above. You'll just spot our first glimpse of the old bridge which dates to 1770 and is still standing today. This little pathway takes us towards the Hermitage Bridge which was built in 1770 and is still in use today. Originally this was a pack horse bridge, very narrow and the only way to cross the river at this point. It's possible to peel off to the left hand side here and walk towards the foundation arches of the bridge. Originally it used to be possible to walk under the bridge through the little stone arch but that's now been blocked up for safety reasons. It's incredible to think that this bridge predates the creation of the United States of America and not only is it still standing but it's still being used today. At this point you can also see just how powerful the flow is as the river narrows into a gorge just below the Black Lynn waterfalls. It's a pretty turbulent and dangerous stretch of water so caution definitely is the order of the day. But again you can see just how incredible the colours of the autumn are. Even some of the trees look like they're from another world. If we retrace our steps from the undercroft of the old bridge and then turn left, then we can walk up these knotted, rooted steps towards the old bridge, where we will also see the oldest tree in the hermitage. This tree which is growing out of the bridge is believed to be the oldest tree in this woodland. 
It's a cedar of Lebanon. And as you can see, not only is it incredibly tall, but it's believed to date to between 1760 and 1770 and is a rare survivor. As we walk onto the bridge, we get the first view of the Black Lynn waterfalls. The power of the water is fierce and the roar of the noise is incredible. And look at those colours. It really is something from a fairy tale. The Black Lynn waterfall comes from the Gaelic language. A lynn is a deep pool of water and black because of the colour of the water after a flood, because of the peat on the hills, staining the water as it flows down the mountains. From here we also get our first glimpse of the Ossian's Hall of Mirrors building, perched high on the cliffs overlooking the falls. And down to the side you get another look into the dark, deep pool known as the Lynn Pool. Don't be put off by the foam on the surface. It's entirely natural and is caused because of the sheer turbulence of the water as it falls down the waterfall. It's also worth noting at this point to have dogs on lead and also children because the walls are not particularly high and it's a long way down and the water below is incredibly powerful and often very cold. So, time to go and take a look inside Ossian's Hall of Mirrors. Ossian's Hall of Mirrors was first built back in the 1750s and in the 1780s in response to James Macpherson's best-selling books it was redesigned and redecorated to act as a shrine to the blind bard Ossian who was supposed to have lived and written his heroic verses here in the 3rd century. And what a setting! If you'd visited Ossian's Hall in the 1800s, the walls were clad with mirrors which dropped down from above and reflected this incredible view onto all angles of the building. But unfortunately in 1869, part of this building was blown up with gunpowder and the mirrors were destroyed. One can only imagine how it would have looked in its heyday, however, the views are utterly gorgeous and with the colours it's absolutely incredible. You'll often see wild Atlantic salmon jumping at this waterfall making their way to their spawning grounds upstream and this is without doubt one of the most spectacular views in Scotland. The power of the water is absolutely ferocious, throwing up a mist from the power of the water. As you can see from this sign, there is a private wedding ceremony taking place today at the Hermitage. And anyone can book it as a wedding venue and what a venue to get married. So always worth bearing in mind to keep your dogs close because muddy paws on a wedding dress is not a good combination. Over here to the left is another example of centuries of wishes. Another tree jam-packed full of coins. On this trunk the coins have been spiralled in in such a way that it almost looks like a work of art. And down the sides of the tree 
It almost resembles something like an armadillo. You might be wondering why on earth someone would blow up part of Ossian's Hall of Mirror with gunpowder. Well, it has a lot to do with a bridge. The Duke of Athol partly funded the construction of a bridge over the River Tay at nearby Dunkeld, with the bridge opening in 1809. It was constructed by Scotland's most famous engineer, Thomas Telford. Government funding for the bridge fell well short of what was expected to build the bridge, so the Duke of Athol funded the difference. In order to regain his costs, the Duke of Athol was allowed to put a toll on the bridge, so people had to pay to cross. Locals began to resent this fee, thinking that the Duke had recouped his money multiple times over, and then things came to a head when the railway came to this area. The problem was that the railway line and station were on the opposite side of the river from the town, so people had to pay to access the railway. Worse still, when a new church was built on the opposite side of the river from the town, locals had to pay to cross in order to attend church. Things came to a head when locals began to riot against the charges and on multiple occasions the toll barrier was ripped off and thrown into the river. And in 1869, it became such a problem that a local detachment of the Royal Highlanders had to be sent to Dunkeld to keep the peace. Desperate to force the hand of the Duke of Athol to remove the costs, it was decided to blow up his beloved hermitage so gunpowder was planted under the foundations of Ossian's Hall of Mirrors and a charge was set. The building wasn't completely destroyed, but clearly the Duke of Athol got the message, because not long after the bridge toll was removed and people were finally able to cross for free. Clearly an example of power to the people. So where did the Duke of Athol get all his wealth from? Well, at one point the family owned over 400,000 acres of land in this area, centred around Blair Castle, the family stronghold 17 miles north, which they still own today. And that land was to provide the Duke of Athol with incredible wealth, partly because in the 18th century they planted the land with forestry. Many of the trees were larch trees, a type of tree imported from the Alps and Central Europe. The trees grew phenomenally well in this climate, even though the hills had very little soil. Some of the hills were so inaccessible that they actually used a cannon to fire seeds onto the hillside. And as you can see, as well as being a perfect environment for hiking, it's also a great place to come and cycle. When the Napoleonic Wars began to break out decades later, the Duke of Athol was in a perfect position to begin to harvest mature forest and in the process make millions in today's money. And in a time before Netflix and iPads, you had to spend your money on something. So why not a beautiful woodland walk? The next feature that we come to is known as Ossian's Seat. It's a collection of large stone boulders and a stone seat, and many of the boulders appear to have been stacked, which rules out the idea that they've been naturally deposited. It seems as though this is part of the magical landscape, 
and these rocks have been positioned to enhance this site. This is believed to have been one of the resting places of Ossian, where he would have sat to take in the incredible view and the romantic location, affording him beautiful views over the river and the river valley below. Not content with creating a beautiful planted woodland, Ossian's Hall of Mirrors and Ossian's Seat, the Duke of Athol decided to go one step further. He advertised in the local paper, looking for an elderly man with a white beard, willing to wear a suit made from lichens and ferns to play the part of Ossian. The successful applicant would also be provided with this beautiful cave to live in. They would be expected to emerge to entertain the friends and family of the Duke of Athol each day. You might say that the interior is fairly basic, however, on the bright side, they had beautiful views, and not one, not two, in actual fact three windows. They also had a stone bench, which would have likely doubled as their bed. Somewhat unsurprisingly, despite the appeals in the local newspaper, there were no applicants for the position. But at least today, we can come and enjoy this stunningly beautiful place. It's possible to hike in these forests for mile after mile, but I've shown you the highlights of this incredible place and now I'm retracing my routes back towards Ossian's Hall of Mirrors and I've saved the best for last, the most spectacular of all the views within the Hermitage. On the way back, I was fortunate enough to catch a fleeting glimpse of one of the native red squirrels that inhabit this forest. So it's always worth keeping an eye out and looking up for these curious, timid little animals. And here's yet another of the magical wishing trees. All these coins and all these wishes left over the years. If you retrace your steps back to Ossian's Hall of Mirrors, you'll notice a small path that goes to the right hand side. But watch your footing as you climb down, as it can be pretty slippery and muddy. From here you get an incredible alternative perspective of the Black Lynn waterfalls. But be very careful because there is no fencing whatsoever and it is a long way down. At the bottom of this slope, you'll get that alternative view, and for me, one of the most spectacular views in Scotland. 
It's almost as though we've stepped onto the set of a Lord of the Rings movie. Without a doubt, Scotland at its very best. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this virtual tour of the Hermitage near Perthshire in Scotland and you can see why I love this place so much. If you like what you see and you're not subscribed, then hit the button. Now, stay tuned and I'll give you a little more information on how to get to this magical place. So whereabouts is the Hermitage? Well, first of all, whereabouts is Scotland? This isn't quite as high tech as I hoped it might be, but hopefully it'll serve a purpose. So Scotland lies in the northwest end of Europe, and as we zoom in, you see the United Kingdom start to appear. For now, ignore the blue dot, that's just where I happen to be recording this video. And if we focus in on the city of Perth, that gives you a good indicator of where the Hermitage is. If you follow the A9 north, which is the main road between Perth and Inverness, you'll see a red dot start to appear near Dunkeld. So on the south side is the village of Burnham, and on the north side is the town of Dunkeld. If you follow that road along past the caravan park and the old sawmill and turn left, then you will find the Hermitage Car Park. This is me travelling north on the A9 and I've just passed the town of Dunkeld on my right hand side. Drive past the old sawmill and caravan park on your left and after about half a mile you'll see a brown sign on your left which says the Hermitage. The A9 is a notoriously dangerous road so be careful turning on to and off of it. So turn off to the left hand side and then follow the road around the bend. If possible take the left hand branch of the road which takes you down to the lower car park and the river will start to appear on your left hand side. If the car park's full Simply do a loop around it, come back up the hill and then take the first left into the overflow car park. If you're a member of the National Trust then you get to park for free. If not, make sure you bring three £1 coins for parking. There is normally a chemical toilet on site and there are also public toilets in the nearby town of Dunkeld, which is also a great place to get some food. With a selection of little restaurants and cafes. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my first ever extended video on YouTube. If you like what you see, then please hit the subscribe button. And soon there will be lots more fantastic videos covering some of the best places in Scotland to visit. So best wishes, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.